welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be doing a wrap up for July and I am so excited because it was a pretty good reading month. Uh, I, what happened this month? I just read a lot this month. Summer Ween was this month. I really, I was going to say I really liked the book of the month selections this month, but we'll get to that in a second. <laughs> I kind of like them. Uh, so I just had a ton of stuff to read and it was a very good reading month. So we're just going to jump right in to the books that I read because I'm trying to keep this short, which if you, uh, subscribe to my channel and watch my videos, you know, I'm really bad at doing. So let's get started. As usual, I always start with the books that I DNF. It seems like I DNF at least once a month, which I feel like I probably could do better. I'm currently struggling with a book that I should DNF and I just really don't want to that's part of the series and the books are pretty but I really probably should DNF it but anyway the book that I DNF this month was a book of the month book and it's called Firstborn and this is basically about uh twin sisters one is alive in England and she finds out that her twin sister is dead in New York and she has to go to New York with her parents to figure out what happened and it is ruled a suspicious death and she was murdered <sighs> I knew this was going to be an issue when I saw it on Book of the Month. I was like, okay. I tended to get all of their thrillers and horror books because I love thriller books. I absolutely love them. If I didn't need some variety, this would probably just be a thriller book channel. But they're my favorite books. They're my favorite to review. Problem is, I hate certain tropes. And the twin trope is one that I absolutely loathe. And this in my opinion did it horribly I have kind of a rule also about thrillers uh if I want to DNF a thriller my rule is that I have to get about halfway if I if I can I have to get at least at least ha close to halfway close to halfway because normally there's a twist that they throw in halfway this one I really didn't notice anything and then my other rule and what I tend to do is when I DNF a thriller I go to the end to see if I had any inkling about what was going on if I DNF'd it for a good reason and one of my rules about thrillers being good thrillers is if you get halfway through the book and you skip forward to the end and you see who like did it or what's going on and you understand who it is etc and what's going on it's a good thriller it kept you confused the whole time but it had who did it etc in it I had no clue like what was going on at the end like apparently this book is like so I'm glad I didn't have to because I did guess like the twist it's a twin book you can guess the twist it's the same in every twin book uh and I didn't really understand what the heck was going on at the end because it goes super weird so I'm really glad I DNF this I had no interest in this unfortunately it was a book of the month pick and that makes me sad I like when I like their books but this is my DNF this is not for me. Next, I'm going to be talking about the books that I read, Kindle slash audio, and we're going to start with the series Say I Love You, which is a manga uh, that I saw the I saw the anime for. Absolutely loved it. Realized that the manga was on Kindle Unlimited, so I went ahead and I think it's like one through thirteen is on Kindle Unlimited, and then fourteen through sixteen isn't. So I think I read volumes one through ten. I didn't really check. I didn't write it down because it's basically just the anime recopied and it was just for my enjoyment. So I just didn't even write them down. I think they're on my Goodreads though. But wow, that was interesting. So basically Say I Love You, I'll pop up the first volume right here, is a manga that involves kind of a loner girl and very popular boy. It's very big trope in man manga and anime. And obviously he falls head over heels for her. She's kind of weird and he likes the weirdness and how she's not all over him and whatever. So anyway, they get together and it's basically the story about them together for 16 volumes. And it is a finished, a little bit older manga. So if you do want to read a manga, that one's cute. I was not expecting it to be as sexually explicit as it was. Like there was some nudity in it and I was like, oh my gosh, I wasn't expecting this because the anime is very, very cutesy etc so when the manga threw in some of these like nude portions i was like what is happening what is happening so just be aware if you decide to pick that one up 90 percent of the time it's like cute boy meets girl kind of thing and then like 
uh, uh, maybe 99% of the time it's cute stuff. And then 1% of the time it's just weird nude scenes. I'm like, where did this come from? But it's cute. I like all those. And it made me want to rewatch the anime. The other book that I read non-traditionally was, I'm so proud of myself. I actually finished an audible. I finished an audiobook, and it was The Island by Adrian McKinty. And I gave this a... 3.75 stars and this was a wild story about a family that goes to Australia to be with the dad while he goes to a some sort of doctor's conference and the new wife and the husband's children decide to tag along and they decide that they want to go see koalas and wildlife in Australia take a whole day off together go off to a private island that's run kind of by the locals on the island and they get into some sort of trouble where they have to start running for their lives. It is a wild ride and it was definitely a really fun audiobook. If you want a fun, quick audiobook, highly recommend this one. Really, really loved the, the narrator. She was great. It's definitely for people who like chase thriller. Like there's no real like mysteries going on. It's, it's, this is happening. They're trying to get, people are trying to attack them, kill them. They're running away for their lives. So it's like survival chase kind of thriller if that's what you're into. All right, we are to the physical books, which is super exciting because I read quite a bit this month. And I and a few of them were like books that I had not on like my back, like kind of on my back list. And we're going to start with the sanatorium. And this one was like definitely on my back list. I picked this up and I was so excited to read it. And when I picked this up, I was in a huge reading slump, especially from thrillers. When I picked this up, I didn't want to read any thrillers because I think I had just read like One by One by Ruth Ware. I had read a bunch of Snowy or Sh Shiver. That was another one, I think by like Allie Reynolds. I don't know. Uh, but I read a bunch that were all along the same storyline and I read like the first chapter of this and it also happens like on a snowy cliffside thing. And I was like, there's only so many snowy locked room mysteries that I can read at a time. So I finally got around to this. And it's funny because the reason I got around to this is because we went to my mother's mother-in-law for uh fourth of july and i saw this on her shelf i didn't even bring this with me i saw this paperback on my shelf and i was like paperback kind of seems fun to read i'm gonna read the paperback so i read the paperback for some reason wouldn't read the hardback read the paperback <laughs> so i guess i should hold this one up but this is my copy and I just bought the second book because I was like, oh, there's this is a series. This is I didn't realize this was a series. So I have the hardback of The Retreat by Sarah Pierce Pierce upstairs. So I'm gonna give this back to my mother-in-law <laughs> and keep this copy since it matches my new copy. But anyway, this book is about a woman and her boyfriend are invited to a retreat with her estranged brother and she has some sort of trauma in her past that they don't reveal for a while and people start disappearing and being murdered and they wind up being murdered in these like really weird ways and it has to do with gas masks and it's it's very odd it's very odd but I enjoyed this like quite a bit until the end the end was a little weird because of the ending I did give it a three but I loved the atmosphere I loved everything going on in this book except for like the reveal. It was super weird. It was very convoluted and it didn't need to be all over the place. So I'm still excited though to read the second book because it has like a cliffhanger at the end of it or like a continuation like oh she thinks she's out of danger but this is what's going on. So that's there's like a weird kind of thing with her family going on and you don't like there's a lot of information that's given to you in this book about her family and her brother and what's going on and you do not resolve it. So I read it thinking this was a standalone because most thrillers are. I only know of like cozy mysteries really that become thrillers or like James Patterson books, those types of thrillers. I did not think this was one of those types of thrillers. So when it finished and all these things were left unanswered and there was a moment of like, oh, something's happening to the main character. I was like, what is happening? And so that's when the retreat came out. But I still think it was fun. I gave it a three, but I loved the reading experience and I'm excited to pick up the next book. The next book that I read, I feel like everybody in the entire world read it and I have a book review out for it. It is The House Across the Lake by Riley Sager. And anyone who knows on this channel knows that I am a huge fan of Riley Sager. I like all the books people think are trash. 
I don't care. I like his books. <laughs> he could throw werewolves into books and I'm probably gonna read it and like it. And the only one that I didn't like was Lock Every Room or Lock Every Door. And I think I still gave it like a three and a half. So I love his books. I loved Survive the Night. Don't at me. I liked this book. Survive the Night in this book, I think I gave fours, not fives. But a lot of, I didn't realize how many people were like spoiled for the big spoiler in this. I was not. I lived in utter ignorance while I read this book. I had no idea what was going on. So when the twist happened, I was like, <gasps> like I was legitimately <laughs> so surprised that it made the reading experience so much fun. My husband was literally sitting in the room next to me when I got to the part where like the plots explain and what's happening. And I gasped, I literally gasped while reading this book. And he's like, are you okay? And I'm like, no. <laughs> No, I'm not okay. <laughs> so this book is about a woman who is an ex-celebrity and her husband died like a year ago at the lake and she basically went downhill and started drinking a bunch and her mom, to avoid embarrassment in the family, has sent her to their uh, cabin in the woods on this secluded lake, House Across the Lake, and there's like six other or five other cabins or houses uh, around this lake and she knows everybody since she was a kid because no one leaves this area except the new neighbors that live directly across the lake from her in like the big 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 house and it's very Disturbia, Woman in the Window, um, Stephen, Secret Window. It's very, it's very I'm watching you and I'm seeing what's going on but no one believes me what's going on and I just had so much fun reading it. It was one of those just like what is it? Pop thrillers or whatever they're called. Popcorn thrillers. I loved it. I thought it was so much fun. I think this would make a very, actually, no, I was going to say this would make a very interesting movie. I would not make this into a movie. I, I don't know. I, I don't know how you would do that, but I loved it. I thought it was so much fun. That's all I got to say about it. I thought it was fun. The next book that I read this month was Luminous, which is a book that I've had on my list for a while. And this was a shocker. This actually, like, I wasn't super excited about the premise of this one. It's about a girl who has, uh, who lives in a world where magic is kind of, people don't really like it. And if they do have it, they normally are contracted under like the main mage or whatever. And he controls your whole life and tells you what to do, etc. And her power is glowing. <laughs> she glows. She's luminous. And uh, she basically gets caught up in all the drama of the kingdom and you find out stuff about her powers obviously and the main antagonist is controls darkness or nothingness and I was gonna do a book review about this but I didn't think enough people would be interested in it so I just decided to talk about it in the wrap-up this is shadow and bone fan fiction <laughs> main character is exactly like Shadow and Bone main character. The Darkling is literally in this book, pretty much. Is pretty much in this book. Uh, but you like him a little less in this one. Like, there's still the vibes, but you like him less in this. Like, there's not, like, I was all 100% the Darkling. Love the Darkling. This guy creeped me out a little bit. <laughs> so, if you want a more creepy the Darkling with less romantic interest between the main character and him. This is definitely good. And then her main love interest is the same one basically in Shadow and Bone with it's her being her best friend who's popular, blah, 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 whatever. The problem with this book is I gave it a two and a half because the ending, I hate when books don't have good endings. And for me, this ending was too open-ended. I mean, it felt like everything was too easy. It felt like it was too easy. I mean, it felt like all three Shadow and Bone books built into one. And then at the end, they go off to like go explore unanswered questions from the book. So like you learn something at the very end and they don't expand upon it. They don't teach you anything about it. And they're like, oh, off we go. And this is a standalone as like currently as I know. And I don't think like enough people have like read, for, read it and pushed for it to be a series like what happened with Holly Black's Book of Night, which I was totally right about, by the way. If you haven't seen my Book of uh, Book of Night, uh, what is it called? Review or blog, whatever. You need to watch that because I, 
I told everybody in that review that it's gonna be a series. It's gonna be a series and guess what? Goodreads just changed its little title to Book of Night, book one. So guess what? It's gonna be a series. And I just wanna say I told you so to those people who didn't believe me. Anyway, <laughs> I'm not even supposed to talk about that book in here. This is why my wrap ups are so long. Anyway, I gave this two and a half because the ending was kind of crap. But the rest of the book was really fun and it was really quick read. It's a very short book. I'm sad it wasn't a little better, but I enjoyed the journey and I'm gonna remember it fondly. The next books that I read were technically rereads. Um, and I've talked about this book, I feel like plenty of times, but it's Laura Olympus. Laura Olympus volume one. I reread it because Laura Olympus volume two, look at that cover, just came out. And technically I've read both of them multiple times. So Laura Olympus volume one, I've read probably two or three times now. Plus I read the Webtoon, whatever that app is, but I read it on Webtoon, picked up the copy. It was a little different. Uh, if you read the webtoon and don't think you want to read this, they are a little bit different. Laura Olympus is a Hades and Persephone retelling where basically everything takes place in Olympus and the underworld. And it's really cool because the artwork is just absolutely stunning. I mean, it's beautiful. And I love the colors because the colors represent things in this world. As you can tell by the front, it's so representative of everything. And it's just, oh, it's so beautiful. And... It's just their love story, a take on on this this author's love story of them. Because it's about the same everywhere. Persephone is under the thumb of her mom. Hades comes along, swoops her off her feet, etc. That's I mean, that's basically the story. This takes a much deeper approach to it. Uh, if you have not read these, trigger warning for sexual assault. It's about healing and it's meant to highlight that sexual assault can look different than what movies and stuff portray it as. There's just a scene in it where I just cry every time. Every single time I read this, I cry because it's so sad. And then I just, but yeah, trigger warning for sexual assault, but it's done in such a way that it's, it's, I don't know how to describe it other than it's just, she does it so well that it's gonna make you sad and it's gonna upset you but the point is to heal from it as the book goes on and as like the volumes go on it's not brushed under the rug it's it's a highlight of the book and ugh, i don't know how to talk about it other than that i don't know how to talk about it other than giving stuff away so i i'm just gonna say that if you do struggle with sexual assault storylines it is in here but it's done in a way that is much more sensitive, in my opinion, than a lot of books. It is so sensitive and it's, it's, <sighs> she just does it so well. Like she, she understands how to write those types of storylines. Volume two came out. Technically I've already read it because I read it on Webtoon. Yet again, it's just out. I mean, look how beautiful. It's just so pretty. And as I said before, sexual assault themes still run through this. Like you you have to read volume one to read volume two or you're not gonna have any clue what's going on. But it's a beautiful book. It's a beautiful story. There are so many beautiful, amazing side characters in these books that I, I cannot recommend these enough. I absolutely adore these books and I'll probably read them again before volume three comes out. And uh, even though, I've, again, I've read volume three because I think through volume three and maybe into volume four is out on Webtoon, right? Or webcomics, Webtoon, whatever. But I have to have physical copies because they're stunning. They're stunning. They're so romantic. They're so hopeful and heartbreaking. And I just love Persephone. I love Persephone so much. I love her and I love her friends so much. So I love these books. These are obviously five star reads for me they're wonderful cannot wait for the next one to come out again even though i've read it the next two books that i read were again this is like a backlist month and it, they are the merciful crow and it's duology companion the faithless hawk i love these covers i've had this book for forever and i was able to get this one i think on book outlet yeah little little mark book outlet and this was a fun series it put me in a little bit of a reading slump. There are factions or whatever, casts, something like that. And we're following a girl who is in the 
lowest caste, they have no rights, and they are crows. And they are the ones who actually deal with the plague. So the plague is running rampant through the cities and the crows are the only ones who don't get sick. And it's their like power to be able to go in, take the bodies out and burn them. And they're basically paid for that job. That's how they live. But they're seen as scum. They're seen as rats. They're seen as if crows come calling, it's bad news. And people just don't get that this is a part of life. Death is a part of life. You need people to take care of it. It doesn't make them bad people. It makes them people who are taking care of your town because you can't. So I get so mad reading part of this. But the they basically just follow the same thing. Like you learn a lot of stuff. There's a chosen one tropes and a lot of stuff going on. It does get a little weird. <laughs> they do they do get interesting and there's like deity magic and uh I was a little confused towards the end of the book what was going on, but they were fun. Anyway, I think I gave these, yeah, I gave Merciful Crow a four and I gave Faithless Hawk a three and a half. So they were still really fun. I just, I don't think they were the books I wanted to read at the time. Highly recommend this. Again, think I would have liked them if I read them at a different time. All right, now we're going into the summer ween era. So I'm very, very briefly gonna touch on these because if you wanna know more, I have reading vlogs for summer ween that you should go check out. Summer ween, summer ween <laughs> that you should go check out. But the first book that I read for summer ween was None Shall Sleep. I hate this cover. I talked about it in the, in the reading vlog too. I hate this cover, but it's basically about a girl who was almost killed by a serial killer and it makes her kind of a little more adept to talk to serial killers and get inside their minds because she understands it more. So she is recruited by the FBI as well as this other guy uh, to go talk to teenage serial killers and they get themselves involved with a current case that may be related to one of their teenage serial killers that they have to talk to. This was such a fun book. So much fun. Really love this book. Uh, wish the cover looked different because I cannot stand this cover and it takes place in like the 80s. And it's so good. I had so much fun reading this. It was pretty thrilling. It was very um, like psychological uh, thriller-esque and it was just, it was fun. It was fun. I did give it a 3.75 because I wished it had been more about the interviews. Like I was expecting more Mindhunter and it was more, we barely talked to a couple of teenage serial killers and then we focus on the one in the current case. So I kind of wished it had been more Mindhunter was my, my biggest qualm with it, but it was fun. Highly recommend this one. The other book that I read for Summerween, which was a huge surprise because a lot of people don't like this book, was The Counselors. And actually this was my first attempt at tabbing. And I loved this book so much. <laughs> I gave this a 4.25 stars. I loved this book and I feel like it's cause I read it during Summerween and it was thriller camp vibes. It was so much fun and I can get why people don't like it. It was very unlikable character-esque and the plot line is a little, not unbelievable, but a little fantastical, a little bit. But I thought it was fun. I thought it was so much fun. It is about this girl who is from the local town and she is a new camp counselor at a camp that she's been going to her since she was a kid. And it's rich people camp, but her she's allowed to go because her parents are instructors at the camp. So she gets to go for free, but she's like the townie of the group, but she's treated like one of them. They, they treat her great. I was very happy it didn't go like the bullying route. Actually, the people who bully her are the people from town. But anyway, she has two best friends that go to the camp with her and they're also both gonna be counselors this year. And they're all super excited, except, except our main character is hiding a secret that happened during the school year that she hasn't told her friends and it's leaving a cloud over her and is related to a sudden murder slash death that takes place in the camp. So I love this book. I love this book. I thought it was fun. Uh, I actually didn't guess what was going on for most of it. There's a point where I started realizing like what was going on and it was just, I had fun with this book. If you like young adult thrillers, mysteries, I recommend this one. I thought it was super fun. I could not tell you why people don't like it. <laughs> but if you want to know more, I don't know if I do spoilers or not. Uh, again, this is in my Summerween vlogs. So check those out. I had a lot of fun reading these. So the last two books that I read for the month were not Summerween related because those are like the only books that I read for Summerween. And then I read a bunch of 
short stories, but I haven't finished that book, so I, I didn't include it in this wrap-up. But my last two books, and I feel like this always happens, are my book of the month books. The reason why they're last normally is I'll read one or two at the beginning of the month and then I'll put them off. But one of my goals of the year is to finish the book of the month books that I buy in the month that I buy them. So one of the last books that I read and one of my favorite for the month was, and again, another huge surprise, The Bodyguard by Catherine Center. I loved this book. This book is called The Bodyguard because our main character, a woman, is a bodyguard and a total badass. And she gets assigned to protect this pretty useless uh, celebrity. And he's like, pretty boy, beautiful, like, oh my gosh. But he's also, I love him though at the same time. Like he's not this vapid, awful person. He's super sweet, he's amazing. But anyway, he has to come back into town to go to take care of his mother. So he is, his company basically hires her protection agency and she is assigned the role of taking care of him. And because I love this trope, she has to pretend to be his girlfriend because she has to stay close to him and she he doesn't want like his family to know what's going on, that he's got some sort of weird stalker and the stalker's freaking hilarious. Uh, this book is so funny. I gave it a five. I gave it a five out of five. Uh, it can be a little overwritten in some parts, but I just ignored it because overall I really enjoyed it. And it the overwriting happens more at the beginning. Like there's a little, it's a little cheesy at the beginning and then it gets better. If you want a spicy romance, this is not the book for you. If you only like spicy romances, mm -mm, this is not it. This is not spicy at all. Uh, this was pretty clean. This is a very clean romance, which is again, kind of surprising. I feel like it's been a while since I've read something this clean because uh, I feel like it's the era of sexy romances. <laughs> but this was so good. If you want a clean, quick, super cute, super fun, very romantic book where the female is an absolute badass, you need to read this. This was wonderful. This is going in one of my favorite books of the year probably. It was just a great book. And finally, and my biggest surprise of the month is You're Invited. I loved this book and not a lot of other people did. <laughs> I was really surprised, but this book is twisty, confusing, had me fooled the entire time. I wouldn't say it's super, super thrilling, more mystery, but it is so much fun. It is so much fun to read. And it's basically, we follow our main character who seems a little bit off and she decides that she needs to stop the wedding of her ex-best friend and ex-boyfriend that is going to take place in three months. And she gets invited, you're invited. And it, she just gets it in her head that she's gotta stop it. She gotta stop it. And she's quirky and weird and partly unlikable. And most of the characters are unlikable, which is a lot of a lot of people didn't like about this book. I loved it. I this is another book that I tabbed. Very pretty tabs. Accidentally matched the book with the tabs. So I thought it was pretty good. But I love this book. I thought this was super fun. I was really happy I picked this one up. And I don't know who to recommend it to though, because not a lot of people liked it. So I don't know. I thought it was fun. I don't know. I don't know who to recommend this to. But I did do a whole review on this one as well if you want to go check that out. But that is, I believe, everything I read for the month. But anyway, that, yeah, that was all that I read for the month. It was actually a pretty good reading month. Not a ton of five stars, but everything was pretty far up there. Again, only one DNF and only one book rated below a three, which is fantastic. So I had a really, really great time reading this month and I really hope that I have a good time reading next month as well. And I think I'm gonna try doing a TBR for this month, but we'll see how that goes. So that was my wrap up for July. Let me know what you guys thought about the books, what you thought about my ratings for the books. Uh, if you enjoyed any of them, if you didn't like any of them, if you have any recommendations based on what I did like or didn't like, and uh, I think that's it. Comment, like, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video.